Good evening, everybody, and welcome tonight to this Q&A with three of Britain's top young riders. We've got Owen Dool, John Dibbon, and Theo Gagan Hart. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. This will be streamed live on Facebook tonight. We've got some questions in already, but feel free to send in any questions that you'd like us to ask the riders tonight. So, welcome, for jo welcome guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, let's talk about your season. So, Owen. Last year, Olympic gold at the Rio Olympics. What's it been like since? Um, yeah, it's been good. It's been really different, to be honest. Um, obviously, the track and the road are kind of completely different worlds and, and also how you li your life changes around it. Um, kind of the day-to-day, -day, you know, on the track, the, the main goal is the Olympics, obviously, and that's all you build up for the whole year. Um, whereas the road is kind of about having so many race days. So, you know, you race for 60, 70 days on the road so it's about kind of turning up to every race in, in good shape to be able to do a job to support your teammates so um, instead of having that one massive peak you kind of just try to flatline it a bit more. Oh, and when you do something like the Olympics lots of people talk a, about a, a real downer after the Olympics but you went straight in, signed for Team Sky, had a huge almost career change in a way. Do you feel it's been full gas ever since the Olympics? Um, I had a little bit of time off after the Olympics, um, but I feel really fortunate in a sense. You know, a lot of guys from the track squad had a, kind of a full year off. They're kind of only getting back into it now. And if I was still doing the track, I probably would have done the same and I probably would have struggled for the motivation. But it's almost so refreshing when you start back on the road because everything's so different. It's, it's you know, before I lived in Manchester for four or five years and now I get to live in France. Um, so it's the whole aspect of it. It's, it kind of, it makes it quite easy in a way. And, and what have been your highlights this season? Um, probably been part of the classics group. You know, um, from a young age, I've, I've always wanted to race stuff like the Tour of Flanders and Pyro Bay. And these are races I've just dreamed about doing. And to get to do them in my first year with the team and also being part of a team which is led by two British guys for the classics in, in Ian Stannard and, Lu and Luke Rowe. Um, just being part of that group and, uh, yeah, kind of childhood dreams, really. And, John, you've had a similar similar pathway in you you've had a s incredibly successful track career now you're on the road how's your season been yeah i mean i think a lot of what Dawes said there is true for myself as well um yeah, it's kind of the first season fully on the road and pretty much every race i've done this year has been a new race so you don't know what to expect and obviously the level's gone up so yeah my experience of this year has just been a lot of hard work a lot of longer races a lot of hard races and yeah, just trying to turn up and obviously Team Sky is such a, such a big team and such, you know, always got a lead in the race, he's pretty much going to the win. You know, I'll go for the win in every race you do, so you've always got a job to do, so it's just turning up and finding out what your role is and just trying to fulfil that role as best you can in whatever race it is. And you won the time trial at the Tour of California, was that the highlight for you this season or, or is there anything else up there? Uh, yeah, no, definitely, definitely the highlight's been the win in California, just because it was just so unexpected, really. Um, like, I knew, I had good preparation going to the race, actually, we did 10 days training at altitude with Teo, um, and then, yeah, kind of in the back of my mind, a week was thinking of the time trial, because sort of normally it's my best sort of event at time trial, um, but yeah, definitely didn't expect to win, so that was the big, big highlight, and... Yeah, no, the rest of the year, I mean, riding the classics was super good. Um, doing the races I've always watched as a kid, you know, doing Paris Bay, doing Tour of Flanders, just to make the start line of them was, uh, yeah, really nice. Teo, what about you? Uh, yeah, I think, it, Ooh, I think it's been similar to, uh, to John um, and all really just, for all of us, it's big motivation doing big races with, with riders that can win. We've seen again today, um, Mikhail Kwiatowski just won another big race to kind of top off what's been an amazing month for the team. So hopefully we can finish the job off tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I think for us, it's being part of big, big races and big wins is an amazing experience for the future and kind of for us looking to be in that position in a few years time. Teo, I know personally um, you've always had an interest in being in Team Sky. Um, you were 2010, you actually missed school to go to the team launch. What does it feel like to now be on the team and potentially be a GC contender in the future? Yeah, I think it's a massive honour to be on the team. Obviously, it's a British team and 
every race we go to, we have a lot of fans and, and British people traveling, whether it's in Switzerland or France or all over Europe, really all over the world even. So yeah, it's really special to have the support. And I was just saying to Ian Stannard in the room, actually last time I was in Box Hill, John and I were watching him in the 2012 Olympic road race on the side of the road. So it's kind of, yeah, it's a bit strange to race with some of those guys that you've grown up watching on TV, but it's a massive opportunity to learn from guys that have been racing at this level for yeah a long time. So make the most of it. So it has been such a dream for you. What has the expectation um, versus the reality been like? What is it actually like as a pro rider? Yeah, I think personally, I feel like my previous team prepared me really well for kind of the rigors of world tour racing. There's a lot of traveling um sometimes changing time zones a lot of different races different countries and different styles of racing i think that's something which is always quite hard to convey is how uh different different races are it might sound really obvious i guess but like for these guys going from the classics to something like tour of california they couldn't be more different races and we kind of just have to be adaptable and ready to to do anything and and also do different jobs within races so yeah, personally, I feel like the kind of three years under 23 I did were gradually bringing me to this point and it's been a really enjoyable season so far. John and Owen, how have you found that step up to that new, le much higher level? Yeah, definitely a higher level, <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah, good, I think a good point Terry said there is, is, you know, the different types of races. So for both me and Owen, certainly the races we want to do when and in the future and the type of riders we are is more the classic type races. And so that's where we can kind of find our feet better at the minute. But then we go to, well, especially for me, is really not a climb. We go to a race like the Tour de Swiss. Obviously, Switzerland has got a fair few mountains. Um, it's just a really big struggle. And I mean, I actually turned up there at the Tour of Swiss. And I was saying, saying to the boys before or after the first stage, like, I don't recognize many people in this race. You know, it's like a whole different group of riders here. You know, normally you do the classics, you recognize the people you race, and then even sort of Tour of California, you've got the familiar faces from the other teams, then Tour of Swiss, you're suddenly the size of the bunch, like the physical, each rider just goes whoop, and they're all sort of more towards Taylor's side. So, yeah, racing against them up the mountain certainly a big, uh, a big task. Racing. Yeah, well, I wasn't racing, they were racing. <laughs> I was somewhere behind them on the road, surviving. What's going on in your head when you're doing races like that? Um, yeah, well, for, for me, it's just the first, the first four days, I was actually not, not good at all. Um, <laughs> and pretty much, pretty much first guy spat, um, first guy dropped from the race. Um, and probably the worst day was, it was a 220k stage and we had a 20k climb, um, about midway and just bombed straight away out the back of the race. And I was pretty much looking at 120k just by myself just to get there and so yeah I mean mentally you just gotta you already calculating straight in a way how much time cut you can have to get there and then you just gotta keep just keep slugging away and you know that hopefully it'll get better you know that for, for that race I knew the last day was a time trial and the second to last stage was a maybe a sprint where I could do a job for Danny our sprinter there so you kind of just you just keep keep plugging away you know keep turning the pedals same as training if you're having a bad training day you just Keep slagging along and just hope the next day will be better. And Owen, you, um, you've actually raced and won gold with Sir Bradley Wiggins. Has he given you any tips on, on how to cope, how to get to that extra level? Um, yeah, to an extent. I remember kind of having a couple of more probably drunken chats with him after Rio about kind of the transition across onto the road. And he said, you know, like at the end of the day, as long as you're putting the work in, you'll be fine. Um, I think that's one of the nice things with cycling in a sense that it's, it's one of these sports where if you put the work in, you will get better. Um, so, you know, it kind of rewards yeah, hard work at the end of the day. And you, you've, all, you've all had this dream of read, riding the Tour de France since you were younger. Um, you've been watching the Tour de France for years. Did you watch this year's Tour de France differently? Have you seen different things now you're watching as a pro? Yeah, for sure. I think um, your understanding of the race is a lot better. You know, I, I used to watch the tour in, in previous years and think, oh, I'm a bit of an expert here. I know I know exactly what's going on, exactly what everyone's thinking. Um, and then all of a sudden, after doing a couple of the races with the team and knowing how the team operate themselves, you kind of already know why the team are doing certain things 
um, and also why other teams are doing stuff. So, um, yeah, you do view it in a, di- in a different sense, for sure. So can you give us some insights? What uh, are the teams <coughs> doing? Uh, it's stuff like, um, so every day before we race, like, so uh, exactly what will happen tomorrow, we'll all get on the bus, projector screen will come down and the, the race plan will come up and, you know, the goal of the day and most of the time that is to win the race, whether that's the overall or that specific stage. So tomorrow will be to win with Elliot. And then it will kind of run through very briefly what everyone's jobs are. So for someone like me and John, we'll be there for the lead out for Elliot. Taylor might have more of a free role uh, to go on Box Hill or something like that. Um, and then it will go into detail, a lot more detail. So the, the race will be cut down into specific sections. Um, so maybe for, so for me, my job probably would be to stay with Elliot all day. You know, if he stops for a leak or if he stops for a mechanical or anything, I'll stop with him, just stay around him all day. Um, and just that amount of detail, I think um, it's, it's quite intense, but I think it just gives the team such a purpose that everyone knows exactly what they have to do um, and where they need to be at any given time. John? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. You know, like, like I said a little bit earlier, you, you know, even if you're not trying to win the race yourself, you know your little role in that that puzzle of trying to win the race. Um, but yeah, I know, watching the tour, I think, we were just we were talking about it earlier, actually, about um, you kind of just appreciate the level more. I mean, you know it's the Tour de France. You know it's the hardest bike race in the world, the best bike race in the world, going the best they're going to go all year. But so for, I like guess the riders that we're normally working for in the races we do, our team leaders in those races go to the Tour, and then they're just you know doing what we do. They're just helping. So someone like um, Mirko Neve, he was our leader in Tour of Swiss, you know, with full gas working for him all day. He's going to GC, did a good ride, got up there in the end. Yeah, you watch the Tour and you look and it's 20k to go, they've still got another climb to go and he's just working on the front, still three or four guys from Sky behind him. So you're just like, Fwah. you know, it is, like the level is just, you know, you appreciate just how hard it is and just how good those guys are. And Teo, you, you are building up to effect- effectively be a GC rider. You will... Um, maybe be taking on Chris Froome, Mikel Lander in the future. From watching this year, what what have you learned from them? What have you taken from watching them? Yeah, I think that's part of this year for all three of us is kind of discovering the type of rider we are and how we want to progress. Um, the pro races are, we might do under 23 or junior versions of them, but they're, they're definitely always very different. Um, so, yeah, I think, being teammates with those guys is a massive opportunity and and watching the tour we were on a training camp in in the mountains in Italy watching the tour and I think it's really different when you've been on you know training with those guys or racing with them all season you know they've been building up to this all year and seeing them kind of progress through the year and even on training camp back in December already thinking about about July so I think it takes on a new significance for us just kind of watching what is our team racing and winning the, the biggest race in the world. Um, and then definitely, yeah, for me, I think, like, Tour de Suisse was a good example. We've been talking about that a bit. I think it was a really nice race, one of the kind of nicest ones we've done this year. Um, but for me, I was kind of shadowing uh, Mikel a little bit as second GC rider and just learning from him. And, I mean, he's that's a guy who's gone top 10 in the, in the Tour de France before. So to have the opportunity just to see him moving around a little bit and see how... The approach he took to some of those climbs was really interesting because actually even in Swiss, the climbs we were doing there were the longest climbs I've ever done in my life, like 20, 23, 24 kilometers and stuff and two or three in a day sometimes. So, yeah, I mean, I'm from around here. It's not really like that around here. So uh, it's a new experience. And, yeah, just seeing how guys that have done those races five or six different times, how they operate and the little things they do to save energy over the eight days is, is really interesting. So what did you learn? What did you learn? Can you give us some tips? Yeah, I think uh, kind of started all the way back in maybe Strada Bianchi for me in terms of like looking at what different riders do and appreciating how you work for different GC like uh, GC riders or leaders. Like every guy wants something different. So in our roles this year where we're um, kind of positioning guys and bringing them certain bits of clothing and bringing bottles at different moments, taking musettes. There's so many different roles within working for someone and and each guy wants that role potentially done a little bit differently. Uh, So for me and Dor, we were at Strada Bianchi with um, Mikhail Kwiatowski when he won there. And that was kind of the first big win of the year, I think, for us. Um, 
and he's a guy that likes to arrive pretty late. He's quite relaxed in the bunch, and he, I mean, even today in San Sebastian, he can move himself around a lot. So, yeah, I think you just start to appreciate how different your role can be, even when you're doing the same role. And I think ultimately that's what makes cycling so popular and interesting for the fans and the riders is that it's always different and there's always a different dynamic from race to race. I was out at the Tour de France and at the end of the tour, um, Kutowski was given the man of the match because he did, I think you, we all agreed, put in an incredible performance. What would you each say was your highlight from the tour? Which was the best bit? Which bit did you love? Uh, I think watching Chris in the final time trial, uh, that and the prologue actually, so the, the start and the end for me, I think watching, yeah, first that final time trial, you could see how in control he was and he just looked so smooth on the climbs in contrast to a lot of the other riders. He just, yeah, he looked really like he had it under control. Um, and then I think watching the prologue just epitomised the strength of the team and yeah, watching G win after what happened in, in the Giro was pretty special, I'd say. Yeah, I think for me, definitely the, probably the prologue. You know, just that first day, you know, it's, it's, I can imagine what it's like being there, you know, if you're another team or certainly if you're in this team and it's first day, you know, how, how has everyone arrived at the race? Who's good? Who's not? It's wet. It's the prologue and then Bosch, this guy I've got four, four riders in the top 10 and it's just like, it's just such like a cement that they are the number one team in the race. They're going to be the team to race against all race and it just puts them up there. And I just think mentally that must have been a massive thing for, you know, even, even through me, you know, he's just got like a boost, like I'm, need to be, I'm where I need to be, the team where I need to be and everyone just, that's the ball rolling then. And I just obviously G1 and we were, I don't know if we were already in Lavinia or not, but I was just like, fair play. It's good. He's such a popular rider, G, isn't he? I mean, I know everybody, everybody on the team is so pleased because he's worked so hard and tirelessly for all the other riders for, for years. But he took first man to wear the yellow jersey, so that accolade's gone. The first Welsh man, yes. to, <laughs> so that accolade's gone. Um, but must have been incredible for for Welsh fans. Yeah, I remember. Um, I was actually travelling down from. I had a flight out to I think to Lavinia or Nice um, to fly out for it and uh, my flight got diverted so I was in a taxi for three hours and um, probably shouldn't say this but I, I streamed the whole race on my, my team phone <laughs> so I'll probably have like quite a big bill from them they'll probably won't be happy about it but uh, yeah you know to watch G win that was pretty special you know he's he's such a good guy and you can tell by you know all three of us picked up the prologue and specifically G winning as one of the highlights and I think that just kind of shows the type of guy he is um, and kind of, for me, it, it was either that or the um, the, the shorter stage where um, the team didn't have the jersey. And you know, a lot Sky get a lot of criticism for how they race and how we control the race, and it makes it quite negative. And the one day we don't have the jersey, everyone's saying how great a day it is. And you know, because that's again, it's the team animating the race and taking control of it. Um, so for me, that stage, yeah, where um, where Lando was up the road and Cuesta dropped back for Froomey, and yeah, I think that was just another highlight. Senior coaches have told me that you're a potential Geraint type character in the future. You ride very similar. Going to stay on your bike a bit more? Um, I'm not going to say anything just in case for tomorrow. We'll touch, that's not even wood, that's plastic or something. Um, yeah, I think uh, I seem to get compared to G quite a lot. I don't know whether it's just because we're both Welsh and from Cardiff and I ride the track as well, but um, he's probably sick of it, to be honest. Um, I don't know, like I think... Uh, I, I'd like to think that I could kind of hopefully do a small amount of what he's done, maybe more in the kind of the one day races. Um, and that's the thing to an extent, it's like Taylor was saying earlier, you know, we all, we all came into this year kind of roughly knowing what type of riders we were from amateurs and stuff like that, you know, what races suit us, what don't. Um, and it's all about kind of finding your feet, you know, um, you never, you never know. Dibbo could win the tour. You know, like it's unlikely, but, uh, <laughs> You know, you know, you never know. I think, um, yeah, I, th I think that was kind of one of the main things for this year. And when I sat down with with the coaches and stuff at the start of the year, and you kind of you you uh, you lay out your race program, and they kind of give you try to give you as diverse a race program as possible. Um, so, for example, I did all the uh, the the cobble classics, and I also did like the Ardennes classics. I think Teo's going to do uh, the Eneco Tour, which is like, you know, obviously he's you kind of pigeonhole him to an extent as a climber you know obviously what he did Tour de Suisse in California but then he's also going to be racing in Enico because you, you just never know um, 
so yeah, I think that's kind of a big thing for us is as as a young group is learning about ourselves and what type of riders we could potentially be. John, John, how do you see yourself in the future? Classics? Hopefully, yeah. I mean, th that's definitely the race. I think not. Maybe it's just because I suit them the best, but it's certainly the races I enjoy the most. Um, yeah, like riding Roubaix this year, it's just, that's definitely my favourite race. And it's one I've always watched and actually did the junior version a few years ago. And it's just, it's just really is an epic race and it's brutal. And I think those sort of one day classics, are, the, the, you know, the cobble classics are, you know, it's almost just such a fight and, you know, position is so much of the race and your, your shoulder to shoulder, all, you know, five abreast and that's all there's room for and a little Belgian laying and it's, it's just, it's just really good fun. And so hopefully, yeah, there'll be the races I develop into in the, in the future years. And hopefully again, I go to those races and get picked to ride in them next year and just try and keep making it as far as possible. Yeah, there's certainly ones I'll look forward to. And Teo, we've said before, you're, you're attempting to be a GC rider. It must be great to be on Team Sky, but there's so much strength in that team. We saw the dominance at the Tour de France. At what stage do you see yourself riding riding in the Tour de France? When do you hope to make that Tour de France team? Yeah, I think it just uh, motivates you to increase your own level. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of people do say that to us. I think oh, oh, it's a hard team to get into these races or that races, but personally, I've been really, really happy with my program this year. Um, done all the kind of races that I really wanted to do at the start of the year. So, yeah, it's a long-term goal to ride the tour and just keep chipping away and kind of setting smaller interim goals in in the meantime before that is kind of realistic and, and attainable. But I think that's something that um, came from the top, really, at the start of the year to us from from Dave and from the management was that we should all be aiming to to not only go to the big races but to win races and and start trying to do that this year and also learn how to do that. So, yeah, I think we're all aiming big and, I mean, Dool's already got an Olympic medal around his neck, so anything's possible. <laughs> you, you talk about, you talked about how difficult it was stepping up from, from being a pro rider to actually doing World Tour. The Tour's another level, isn't it? You've just talked about Nieve and following him. I'm sure when you first started riding, you thought, of course, I can do the tour, like you say, I know how to do this. Are you quite daunted now that you've, you've felt that step up? Is it daunting to think I'm going to be riding the Tour de France? Uh, I wouldn't say it's daunting. I'd say you definitely understand the level. You see the best guys at maybe Swiss. And meanwhile, there's a load of the other best guys racing in France at the Dauphiné. Um, and then they're all coming together at the tour in, they hope, even better form. So... I think you start to understand that it's an even bigger step up from, from the races we're doing currently. Um, the thing which always resonates with me is it's like the 200 best riders in the world at their best level of the year. Um, but actually, in massive contrast, I think we start seeing more and more guys that we've either grown up with or that we know or that we've raced for years with or trained with, whatever it is, racing the tour. So it actually, for me, has brought it nearer kind of guys that I train with every day, being there makes it feel more possible rather than maybe further away. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> well, I was just going to say as well, one, one kind of point as well is, is I think riding the tour is a big thing in itself, but I think riding it for Sky is a whole different kettle of fish. You know, if you could go to the tour for a different team, you might have a bit of a freer role. You might, you know, be able to take a couple of days off here, go in the break for that day. If you're part of a sprint lead out, you know, you, you only got to switch on for say 10 of those days. But if you go for Sky, it's every single day and everyone has to do a job every single day. So, you, you know, you have to be at an even higher level to an extent to ride the tour for Sky. And you've kind of almost got to be proven already in previous Grand Tours even to get that nod. And talking about ambitions, uh, you, you two have a great track career already. You've mentioned Owen already has a gold Olympic medal around his neck. Not now, <laughs> but he's had one. Um, it's underneath his <laughs> Carrying it around at all times. Do you, do you two, will you two go back on the track? 2020 Tokyo Olympics, will we see you there? Um, I think for me personally, I, mean, I don't know what uh, Dual thinks, but definitely... I mean, I didn't, didn't go to the last Olympics, so it's certainly still a massive, massive career goal to go to the Olympics and, and go for the gold medal there. And so I think um, looking towards Tokyo, Tokyo 2020, it's not, 
it's not next year. It's, it's still three years away, so a lot can happen. Um, a lot can happen between then. Like it's certainly in my mind to go for it, and I I plan to. But it's still. I said to myself, I've got two years now on the road, this year and next year, to see how it goes with the team, see how I develop, and I certainly still plan to do that. And hopefully, hopefully go well on the road, and it leaves um, at the end of end of two years on the road. I'll see if I'm how I'm feeling on the track. Well, we've got some questions that have been sent in via Facebook, Instagram, and I think some people in the audience have said them. So we'll go through a few here. First one is David Staley, who I believe is here today. Hello, David. Uh, David's only got one long, and um, he will be riding the Prudential Ride London tomorrow. So David has asked this question. As I only have one long, hills are a struggle. Um, any advice and tips you can give to help me? If you go down them like John Dibbon, then... Uh doesn't matter the speed you go off them. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm definitely suffering the most on hills, so I think I might have one long, actually. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like it. Um, well, it's, it's just basic stuff, you know, like, well, the, the hills you're doing tomorrow, um, I think the worst one, I think Box Hill's okay. It's not too steep, and so you can keep, you know, it doesn't really force you to go too deep. But for me, it's the steeper, the worse ones. I think there's um, Lee Phil, that's the name of it. That That's the tough one from what I remember and been told. It's just, it's just when it is really steep, it's not like you've got to try and go the same speed you're going on the rest of the climb. You know, if it's 10% or 15%, that's where you can just get in a little gear, just get over that bit, and then you worry about trying to get a little bit of speed on the shallower bits. Um, what else? What other tips? sit on don't, don't give anyone a turn all day just literally yeah save it for the hills if, if you if if there is if there's any challenging bit of the race you know if you know there's going to be some crosswind or hills like wait <laughs> I'm not going to be crosswind I think going to put it in the gutter tomorrow though no but I mean like just especially you know leading up to leading up to the tough bits get a bit of food and get some water in just make sure you save a little bit of energy sit on the wheels and then don't get too carried away at the bottom just pace yourself up and You'll be right. Question from Mark Mooney. How do you keep yourself motivated when you're tired and don't want to go out training? <laughs> am I the best one for this again, <laughs> am I? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think what I do anyway is just there's a certain amount of sort of routine to it. Um, sort of the daily grind of training is something that I guess we're all used to. But, you know, if you're not, if you're not part of your daily routine, if you're not lucky enough to be a full-time athlete, it's more just think... You know, try and think of some good reasons why you're doing it. I mean, for all of us, it's because ultimately we're dreaming of winning, dreaming of getting better. Um, but if, if you're just, you know, say you're doing tomorrow's Ride London, if, if that's in your plan, you know you're doing the, the sportif, and then you think, well, if I don't train today, then I might not get around. So just use your goals as, well, set goals. There you go, yeah, set goals, and then use those goals as motivation. What's your favourite... This is a question from Philip Ward. What's your favourite training location in the world? Uh, I think... I mean, certainly last week we were near uh, Bormio. We were staying in Lavinio and, and st on the top of the Stelvio Pass for a few days. And that was my first time there. I really enjoyed it there, the amount of climbing you could do. Um, I think there was one day in... Three and a half hours, I had over 3,000 meters climbing, basically just three different climbs back to back. And yeah, there's not that many places you can do that in the world and so many different climbs and different types of climbs and different roads. So I think for me, the biggest thing is actually that we get to go to so many different places um, all over the world and, and yeah, and train in loads of amazing places. So I think rather than one standout, it's probably just the amount of variety we get. We agree. <laughs> um, a question from Eddie. How different is Team Sky from your previous teams and what are your longer term goals within the team? We, we sort of asked, answered that second one, haven't we already a, a little bit? But how different is Team Sky from your previous team? Oh, polar opposites. <laughs> um, me and John were fortunate enough that we rode for Team Wiggins for two years with Brad's team. And um, when the team was first set up, the whole goal, everything was around the Olympics. Um, so the two years we did were always building towards the games um which gave us a fair bit of leeway um like my first year with the team i was focused on turning professional 
Um, so every race I did, I was kind of going for a result. Like, the, um, unfortunately, I signed my, my contract with Sky end of 2015 before the games, which meant I had 2016 to solely focus on the Olympics, which is, I think it's, it's a massive advantage, you know, when you haven't got to worry about the road stuff and, and trying to like spin plates, get a contract. Um, so I mean, you can just go to races and, and enjoy it. Um, you know, I think any race, if you watched last, probably the 2016 year with Team Wiggins, like Tour of Abu Dhabi, Tour of California, if you tuned in, chances are you'd have 50% plus of the teams out the back, you know, just kind of taking the race and enjoying it. And, um, you know, it was one of these these teams where, the, like myself, Brad, John, Andy Tennant, Stephen Burke, the majority of the kind of the track squad, the goal was Rio. So it meant we could, like I said, be relaxed at races. Um, I kind of enjoy it. Whereas here and now at Sky, obviously you, you, you pay to be part of the team and every race you go to, you, the, the team has a plan. Um, doesn't matter doesn't matter if you're working for Froomey. Say if you go in there as Froomey the leader or you go and say as me or John or someone as the leader. Doesn't matter who it is, the team will commit 100% and trying to work out the best way possible to support that rider to win. So um, yeah, very different. Uh, yeah, I think my previous team was pretty, like a lot of different nationalities and languages and cultures and stuff. It was majority Americans, but it was still quite international. And I think the biggest difference is just going from a team where it's like uh, 10, 11 riders and six or seven support staff to a team where there's like 50 background staff and 30 bike riders and a lot of faces and names and a big infrastructure so that's probably the biggest difference for me I think is just yeah coming to the first training camp trying to remember everyone's names and remember who all the different staff are we have like a print out with all the photos and people's names and stuff to try help us but yeah I think that that kind of make, strikes you instantly how different the world tour to continental level is so another question from Serafino what is your favorite race um I think probably the most standout week for me this year would be either the Basque Country or the Ardennes. Uh, just races with a lot of history and really enjoyable races. Amazing, different, but amazing scenery. And yeah, I'm looking forward to doing loads of new races as well. And, and every race this season has been new. So it's quite, like John said earlier, exciting and gets to find out. Another question um, from Donald Willey. Which country has the best spectators and why? Um, uh, probably here. Probably Britain, I'd have to say. I think, uh, I mean, you've got the historic races that have been going for hundreds or 100 years or so in, in the concert like Flanders and Roubaix and the crowds there are unbelievable. But I have to say the one, the one day I have raced this year, which I think has been the biggest crowds for sure, was the, and you'll probably agree, the last day of Tour of Yorkshire. Yeah, the last stage there all round um around Huddersfield and finishing Sheffield like it was just unbelievable you know uh, god knows how many people were there but yeah I think as well the British fans you know it helps riding for Sky I mean last year we I rode for Team Wigan so you'd always get an extra shout this year it's Team Sky so obviously it's the home team so you can actually shout and so yeah definitely uh here England Britain Okay, um, Stephen Swarmar Smith asks, who is the most stylish rider, both on and off the bike, Team Sky Riders, past and present? Well, present is me, isn't it? <laughs> um, no, I think uh, I think someone I've always looked up to on the bike, and kind of the bike to an extent is Brad. You know, um, I think just like the way he rides, um, I think, yeah, probably everyone would agree with that. Yeah. Is that right, boys? Yeah. yeah. I think Quiato, he's another one who always looks good on a bike, you know. Yeah. Um, just, but also, I think it's it's you've also you've got to look good on a bike, but also how you how you race as well. I think that's a big thing, you know. You could be, you could have like a really nice position, look really tan, but if you're not very good at cycling, <laughs> you know, it's and you're sat at the back all the time, you know. But when you're at the front of the race, animating it like Quiato was today, I think that's one for me. Yeah. Fantastic. Roly Clifford asks, growing up, um, and growing and racing in and around London, Teo. How is riding for Team Sky different? If you could, would you ride for your old team again in the future? Uh, no, I think this is my 
my dream was to ride for this team growing up and this was always the ambition kind of going back since when I first started cycling. Um, and I guess I started cycling about the time when this team started really. So kind of spent that whole team, whole time, sorry, watching this team race and win big races and kind of just chipping away and building my way up, whether it was the first time at Worlds with John and kind of meeting the pros for the first time and then racing them for the first time and then stagiaring with the team. I think it's just like step by step, getting a bit closer, a bit closer. And that's kind of the outlook that we all have for the next part of our careers, really, whether it's the next five years or whatever, is just maybe, I don't know, next year, the front group of Flanders for, for Owen or myself moving up maybe a few spots in a target race for GC or something. And then you just keep chipping away. And as long as you keep improving, I think we can all kind of, yeah, aim for the top really and see where we go. We've got a question here from Liz Miller, who I believe is Team Sky's top fan. Um, Shout out to Liz. <laughs> With two thirds of your first season done, do you guys feel you have settled in well into Team Sky and has it lived up to your expectations so far? Um, yeah, it's certainly been a lot of what I expected, you know, a lot of said early hard work, but certainly and it's, maybe it's a bit easier because I know some people on the team already, like obviously joined, joined the team with these two good friends for a few years now. And there's a lot of British guys on the team already who I know. Um, so yeah, no, it's met expectations and yeah, it's all, it's been enjoyable so far. All three of you um, took part in the Hammer series. Molly Howard asked, how much did you enjoy that Hammer series and will there be continuation? Um, yeah, I mean, so we all did the Hammer series. I certainly think, I mean, me and Taylor rode on the, the first day and we were going in probably the same as all the riders, I think. It's a new concept. So uh, you know, all the other races you do, they've either had that exact same race, same route the year before, or certainly similar. And this one, it's like a whole new, whole new ball game. So everyone was kind of a bit skeptical, to be honest. And you're going in like, I mean, how's it going to be? Is it, is it going to be an absolute smash fest? Is no one really going to get stuck in? Are people going to be in on you? And then first day, I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you better because he was actually in at the front of the race. But it was just bomb, you know, 100% full gas from the from the the start gun. And I think everyone really enjoyed it. You know, I think um, people watched it, thought it was good, and. Yes, yeah, so my personal opinion is that maybe there's a couple of tiny tweaks that need to be made. Um, I think we saw in that final team time trial chase, there was basically, you know, us out front, um, somewhere chasing, and then sort of a 40 man team time trial behind, which obviously doesn't quite work. But yeah, I think certainly it has um, a place in the future of cycling. So Stephen Colley's asked a question. He says, what do you look forward to after a long ride as we look as we look forward to a pint and a burger? Now, Owen, I remember you stuffing your face with bacon sandwiches um, after the Rio Olympics. So I think we know you like to um, eat a lot after the race. I'd, I'd say pint, a pint and a burger would be perfect for me as well, to be honest. But uh, unfortunately, I can't do that all the time. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, everyone's human. I think... Uh, you know, we're all young lads who, you know, you know, if we could do that, we would. But I think um, uh, for me at the minute, obviously, I'm, I'm living in, fortunately, I'm living in Nice now. And the weather's, you know, anywhere between 25 and 30 degrees every day. So you get back. And the nice thing is actually stopping at a shop and buying a load of fresh fruit. Um, Coke Zero, that kind of thing, yeah. No Welsh cakes then in Nice? No, I might, might get a shipment out. <laughs> get some while I'm back here. So what's your top target in the next three to four years, Simon Ingenas? He says, another Olympic gold or a tour win, or can you do both? Yeah, we'll go both. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm joking. Um, I think uh, just kind of progression is kind of the main thing. Um, race a lot, the Tour of Flanders, Paris Bay, stuff I want to try to be at the kind of the pointy end of by then. Um, and that's kind of just, you know, year in, year out. Obviously, my first year doing the classics this year. And my job was kind of in the first 100K, and that was m me and John, actually. And maybe next year I'd like to maybe do from 100K to 150K, the year after that from 200 to 220, and then eventually be in the final. Um, and, yeah, I'm kind of undecided about going back to the track or not. I'd, I'd, I'd like to, and I think now the Madison's back in it. Is It offers a bit more of a unique opportunity that would give me the chance to double up on events, potentially, if I wanted to as well. Um, but the, the way with the track is, it's just a massive commitment now. You can't, if you're going to do it, you can't do it half-heartedly. You have to give it a whole year of your time and you can't be racing 
on the road you can't be doing the classics in between um you've got to be in the gym with the other lads kind of uh, grinding for it grafting for it so and for those watching on facebook they won't see but we've got quite a young audience here so i'm sure the young the young ones amongst you in the audience would like to know this Tim Westwood has asked, can you tell us how you got involved in cycling and what set you up for a career in cycling? If you are like these young, um, young men here in the audience, what was it that, that managed to get you from just riding on a weekend to being a pro rider? Is that Tim Westwood, the Radio 1 DJ? Or? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> Looks like it. you got a young cyclist. Um, it's Saturday night. He's not DJing. Sorry, He's just watching his Facebook Live. <laughs> what was the question? Sorry, I was just so, I was so enthralled by like, Tim Westwood. I was thinking, is that Tim Westwood? He's seeing this and then he's going out. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you tell us more about your upbringing on the roads um, and what set you up for a career in cycling? Um, I was really fortunate that I had... Um, the Mandy track, probably three or four minutes from my house, is the same place where Gary Thomas started, Nicole Cook, Luke Rowe, Eleanor Barker. Um, and I was just really fortunate that I always enjoyed riding my bike, going out with the mountain bike. And I had like a, yes, a location like that, somewhere safe where I could ride my bike and kind of learn about it. And I had no pressure from my parents. So I kind of, everything I did was my own decision. Um, and yeah, I kind of just took it up from there, really. I think you're pretty similar in. Yeah, yeah, for me, I mean, I very first started riding um, just little off-road races, little cyclocross races, and because um, a friend dragged my dad along to do his first one when I was, I don't know, maybe six or seven, and so I went along and used to sort of go hack around on my mountain bike and try and win a Mars bar and Coke for, for the race, and just just gradual progression from there, really, you know. I mean, I presume I enjoyed it because I was, I was good at it maybe straight away, but yeah, just I just loved riding, and then... Had, had yeah, had a Portsmouth, um, Mountbatten was an outdoor track was close to me, and then Cowshot was uh, another track that's close to me. So you sort of you get to experience riding track, and like like Dawson said, it gives you a point to go to, and and then yeah, I, I remember getting my first road bike some years later, and just keeps just keeps stepping up. So yeah, I just get a bike, go out there, enjoy it, and then just see where it takes you. Yeah, I think it's a pretty similar story, really. Um, I guess the only difference for me was I started riding around central London and um, kind of a little bit maybe more transport, using the bike to go places. And we always did that growing up as well. We didn't really use a car or anything, use the bike or put the bike on a train or, or whatever it was. So, And then it started out that it was then like a tool to go exploring kind of out in the countryside from here, out in Essex and Hertfordshire and kind of discovering new places as like a sounds a bit mental now really like 13 14 year old going out for 100 miles and kind of not knowing where you are for a bit and uh yeah getting lost i guess a bit and finding the way home seven hours later when your mum's a bit worried um and then i kind of discovered racing and yeah i think in london there's hillenden crystal palace herne hill hog hill uh the new Olympic velodrome and the, and the circuit there. So there's so even probably twice as many amazing facilities now as when I started just seven or eight years ago. So yeah, I think we all grew up racing. I remember the first race I went to, the first national race, Dibbo was there and he rode away from everyone for fun. And that was the motivation for me was to kind of try and be like John Dimon. He was, he was, he was yeah. the same size now. He yeah, he was the same size now. <laughs> Age 12. So we're running out of time, so I'm just going to race through these. So if, if one of you can each answer one of these questions. Harry Wicks, what's the hardest aspect to working as a team? Uh, communication on the road when everything's going on. David Staley. Oh, we, we're back again to the, you've already asked your question. Um, so we're actually, we're actually out of questions. We've, um, <laughs> we've managed to get them all in today. I'm sure there are a few more to, to, to answer f through Facebook. But thank you ever so much for joining everybody tonight. Thank you to the audience. Thank you to the riders. You've got a big day ahead at the race tomorrow. So good luck from everybody. And um, thank you and have a great night, everybody. Thanks.